Hello, everybody. Welcome to another conversation. What is happening, my clown friends? It's so good to see you today. Today, I'm with the amazing Angela Hopkins, who is all the way over in Germany. So far from me, but maybe close to you. So jump into that chat and say hi. Let us know how you're doing in the comments, and I'll be right back. It's just a conversation with a fellow clown. It's not very serious, we're clowning around. It's really just a clown This is me. Hello. Welcome. My name is Barnaby. I am founder of Clown Spirit, where we take the power of clowning and we use it to bring lightness, joy and connection to your life and the lives of everybody around you. So Clownversations are weekly interviews with amazing leaders in the field of clowning from all over the world. We do it every single Friday. If you're new to the Clown Spirit family and you're new to Clownversations, you're so welcome. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Give us a like. Share this video with your friends. Help us to spread the world and the word of clowning all over the world because it is a powerful world. And my personal mission and the mission of Clown Spirit is to unleash as many clowns into the world as possible. And I can't do it without your help. So thank you. Thank you for being with us on this journey. Now, before I get into uh, talking about Angela, who is waiting in the wings to come on, and I'm super excited to talk with her, um, I, my friend, Professor Teddy Love, has a quick word to say to you. So over to you, Teddy. Hello, everybody. Now, Mr. King and I are trying to grow this channel. We're trying to get the marvelous art of clowning to as many people as we can around the world. And there's so many ways that you can join in. You can hit the subscribe button below this video. You could give us a thumbs up. It really helps to boost the channel. Or you could get into the chat and tell us your thoughts, your questions about clowning. Or better still, you could check out our amazing Patreon site and find all the cool bonuses that you get if you become a Clownversation supporter. So many ways for us to get the clown out. Back to you in the studio, Mr. King. Thank you so much, Professor. Amazing. Very inspiring. Now, folks, as Professor Teddy Love was just saying, please do jump into the chat and say hi. The chat is right there next to the YouTube video. It's right there. All you need to do is get your fingers busy or your finger if you're on a phone, I guess. And let us know that you're watching, that you're tuning in today. Let us know where you are in the world what your experience and interest in clowning is. Do you know Angela? What clown projects are you doing this week? Tell us, share with us all the beautiful stuff. Jump into that chat and be part of this conversation because we really want this to be interactive, right? It's not just me asking the questions, it's all of us interacting together and having conversations. So if you also have questions for Angela, put them into the chat and I'll feed them into the conversation as we go along. Now, folks, the moment you've all been waiting for, um, I am very excited today to welcome Angela Hopkins, who is the founder, artistic director, and host for Hopkins Workshop for Clown Research. She is an accredited nose-to-nose -nose facilitator and holds clowning workshops and further education courses throughout Germany and internationally. Uh, she was raised in the UK and in Germany She's a mother of four. She's a co-founder of Time Out, a holistic farm for youth with special needs. She's a Waldorf English teacher, project manager. As I just discovered, she's an amazing cook. Uh, and she comes every summer to the UK to cook for walking tours. Amazing. And she is, of course, a very well-known and very well-respected clown facilitator and teacher. So I'm very excited to welcome to the Clownversation stage today, Angela Hopkins! <laughs> Hello! 
Oh wow, loads of people are clapping. Hooray. Yeah, they're all clapping for you. <laughs> Yay. Well, soak it in, soak it in, enjoy it. Usually clown shows, we don't have that many people, uh, so, you know, it's a rare yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a booster, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they stopped very abruptly there, I don't know why. Yeah. Angela, welcome. <laughs> Yeah, thank you for having me here. Thank you. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. It's really a pleasure. I've heard uh, many, many great things about you from many different sources. So it's lovely to actually meet you because we've never met before. No, we have never. But I, I, I kind of know you because I've listened to a lot of clown conversations. Clown conversations. Oh, very cool. Very yeah. cool. I, I love to join when I can. And when I can't, then I just watch them at another time. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's so wonderful. I love that when people, um, often the people that, that I have on as guests are also, you know, listening to it and watching it. And mm. it feels like the community just kind of grows in that way. So that's really yeah. beautiful. Mm. Um, welcome, Joanna. Speaking of people who are our regulars and our supporters, Joanna Bassi. I think, yeah. you, I think Joanna's no, hey, Joanna. not like a single one. She's always there. Great. And we're going to have her on conversations very, very soon, if I can get her, because she's a busy, busy woman. Yeah, I know. And, <laughs> and so is her brother, Leo Bassi, who's uh, even more busy, apparently. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever get him on, but I'm, I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. And Dave, welcome, Dave. Now, if you're there watching, anybody else, please jump into the chat and say hi and let us know you're there watching and we'll feed those conversations, I mean, those questions into the conversation. So, Angela, we are on opposite sides of the world. Tell the folks today mm -hmm. where you are today, um, country, city, place, and what's going on at the moment in your kind of clown world. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm right up the north of Germany. I moved from Potsdam, which is close to Berlin, and um, I'm right up the north, close to the Danish border. It's like uh, it's on the Schlei, which is like a fjord. It's like a... a from the Baltic Sea, it comes in like a fjord. Mm -hmm. um, it's about 40 kilometers long. And at the end of it is this little place called Schleswig, and that's where I am. <laughs> yeah. So it's quite I, remote. Are, are, you, is it, are you near any cities or are you just on a little, in a little sort of rural? Well, it is an actual city. <laughs> okay, got it. And it's kind of close to Flensburg and Kiel. There are all these uh, places up north that I'm still getting to know myself, really, because it's quite mm -hmm. a new a new place to be but it's uh, it's a lovely place and it's uh, it's quieter than Potsdam and, and Berlin obviously um, mm -hmm. the weather's great it's not too not too hot not too cold and um, beautiful landscape everywhere and a lot of water you know like for doing all kind of things like going on boats and stand up paddling and stuff oh like I that. love all that stuff yeah I do a lot of that as well yeah mm -hmm. so Angela Clowning is like you, you know, your your world, like it is for me, right? Like clowning yeah. is sort of the thing. Um, how did you get into it in the first place? What was your what was your route in? How did you realize that? Oh yeah, this is what I want to be doing. Um, quite late, really, I suppose, because um, I was a really young mother, and then um, I did a teacher's training to be an English teacher, so for primary school, and. I, I was just writing this diploma about um, humor in education and, you know, just studying a bit and doing some research. And then I saw that there was this uh, workshop offered for clowning. And I thought, oh, yeah, well, that fits like with my theme. So I went to that and it was my teacher, Vivian Gladwell. Um, and ever since then, I was just totally hooked. So and then I just started going to all kinds of different workshops and just found it very liberating <laughs> and it was yeah for I, I, I really want to yeah. um know about about Vivian Gladwell mm. what was what was it that what was he teaching you specifically that was so exciting for you at that moment I think it was a, a kind of invitation um and to have to have courage to actually be uh or to to make visible what uh who you really are, in a way, getting to know yourself, 
in in clowning you know having uh, being able to express uh, all kinds of things in clown um make it bigger <laughs> mm. um i think that's what that's what um originally draw drew me into the whole thing because um yeah it was it was just like wow who who, who is this person oh that's me uh, so you know it's like a surprise to be a surprise by yourself um wow this is this is me meeting other people and what does it do and oh uh, <laughs> it just is like an inside out role i suppose <laughs> Yeah. 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 And what was what was I'd love to get a, like a, a bit of a sense of mm. nose to nose and that as an organization and what that was um what was it what is it I guess its purpose and what what was Vivian's sort of vision of how to use clowning. Um I think you'd have to invite him yourself and and have a chat with him but um I I trained with nose to nose and yeah. um I think it's just more the the, the person centered approach that is really um, accompanying someone, like being a, a learning community and accompanying the individual in their in their path of clown. In that mm. sense, it's very it's, it's quite personal. So it's quite a, a yeah a kind of a personal way of um, discovering what what there is. And for me, it was it was really the only doorway in. I think I couldn't like handle any via negativa or something else mm. in that direction. Mm. Um, for me, it was just the, my doorway in, and that was so so helpful. Doorways in, yeah, I love that mm. sort of uh, image, right? I often think of clowning as clown teaching as being as trying to find the door, trying trying to help the person find their door. Yeah. And open that door for them. That they are they obviously have to choose to go through it themselves. That you can't push them, but just to help them find that doorway, right? Into yeah. That, into that. Show them, hey, here, there's a the door handle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And maybe yeah. give them a glimpse of what it looks like on the other side to give make them excited. Yeah, yeah but also like to have the courage, you know, and to to be curious uh, about what's behind what's behind the door, you know, what else is there and. Sometimes you just don't know, you know, if you're improvising, you, you have no idea, okay, what's going to happen. And so you do need courage. Uh, so it's, it's kind of facing, facing fear of the unknown, mm. if you like, and just, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I think clowning is a bit like, a bit like cooking. I was thinking the other day, I was just thinking, well, this, these, these two things in my life is clowning and cooking. And how do they fit together? But then I thought, you know, it's like cooking. If you're, you're making a really good pasta sauce or something, then you have to reduce it down to the bare essentials, you know, then it gets tastier and tastier. And then you, you add a little bit of this and you add a little bit of that mm. and a little spark here and there. Um, for me, that's, that's what it's like, you know, and then you're, you're trying to cover all of the taste buds that there are, you know, a little bit of sweet, a little bit of sour. <laughs> Uh, a bit of umami that I just uh, recently learned umami. I didn't know what that was, but now I know. Um, so yeah, how do you cover all of these taste buds? Also in mm. clowning, you know, to be to be rebellious, uh, to be rebellious, to be have have a lot of fun, but also to be. Uh, I don't like being superficial, so that's not my kind of clowning. Mm. Uh, yeah, but also, you know, don't dive down the deep end too much <laughs> because you can get lost, you know, and you need oxygen. So up you go again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's about really being standing with your two feet on the ground and your head in the clouds, which is a nice description for clown, I think. Oh, I love that. Mm. Yeah, like the lightning rod. Yeah. <laughs> or the tree. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. I love that. I'm gonna remember that. Um, so being staying rooted, but reaching for the sky, reaching. Yeah, to whatever yeah. it is, you know, it can, for, for everyone, it can be something different, mm. but it's also for me on stage where, or when, when I have people in the workshop, I say, you know, it's just about how, how present you are and how in the moment you are that you can, open all of these doors, you know, there's, there's so many different ways you can go in an improv and 
if you if you're really there like in your body and there yeah. with your partner and you're aware of things going on around you then it's so so much easier to you know oh wow then this door pops open and then something happens and it there it is you know it's just it flows um there's just um, beautiful moments ju i just want to say to people watching um that angela has just said that like 10 amazing things in the last five minutes <laughs> so right in the chat what what are you getting inspired by here what are the moments the phrases the things the ideas that are kind of like sparking off in your mind right now what would you like to hear angela talk more about right because she just covered a huge amount of ground in a very short space of time we went you know from cooking uh, <laughs> the connection between cooking and clowning and talking about courage and opening doors to talking about, you know, the balance between, um, you know, having the head in the clouds and being rooted down. And we talked about presence and she talked about presence and flow and lots of wonderful themes there. So, uh, yeah, I would love you all just to dive into the chat and mm -hmm. just, just uh, reflect on so that we have these beautiful phrases and ideas kind of logged and captured here. And this is going to also help later when people come back and watch this video they'll it'll be almost like a like an indexing of these great things in the in the chat mm -hmm. so i i would just as we wait for those comments to come through angela i just um what i wanted to pick up on from all of that was going back to the cooking metaphor because yeah. um there's something about that that's really nice about reduction and mm -hmm. getting the essence of something but also, um, oh, hi, Lucy. And hi, hi, Paul. Balance. I was just thinking about the idea of balance because mm. that's really important in cooking as well, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like if you have too much of this, something, you have to add something else to like balance it. Mm. You know, too much sweetness and you put a little lemon juice in or not, you know, too much sourness and you add a little sweet, that, that, kind, of, that kind of thing. And I feel like, Balance is a really key term in clowning as well, right? Mm. Yeah. I mean, with cooking, I would improvise. So I don't, I don't like to cook with uh, recipes. I just like to, to, you know, make something out of whatever's there. And it's, mm. it's like life, really. And it's like being on stage with clown also. You know, you, you, you can have this wish or, or this idea, but be prepared to let it go because something completely different happens. And, uh, <laughs> is that possible <laughs> when you're cooking? So absolutely, if you're, yeah. If you, but if you're like, um, I, I've been watching The Bear a lot recently. Have you have you seen that TV show? No. Bear? Well, you should because I don't. Maybe you don't watch TV, but no. it's about a restaurant. <laughs> it's set in a restaurant. All oh, right. And these, and it's amazing because you get to see how incredible cooking is as a process in a yeah. in a in a restaurant and not just the cooking, but the uh, serving as well. I have a whole new perspective on waiting, like what it really means to serve people in a restaurant. Mm. And, and the idea that actors are often um, waiter, you know, doing waiting jobs. And it's almost seems like a, you know, sellout kind of thing. I'm thinking now, no, this is like a beautiful thing where you get to, make somebody's evening or, or day joyful because of the mm. way you attend to their needs and the way you connect and you listen to their needs and you serve them and you you bring joy yeah and you introduce them to new doing. things you introduce yeah. them to something that they don't know they haven't ever tasted before which is also which is also great you know and that's yeah that's that, that has something about the clowning also which i love to introduce people to clowning who have never done clowning before. Yeah. So do you do um, beginners workshops and you work with more experienced people? I'm assuming you do. Yeah. So, yeah. So I have, uh, I have like introduction days, like a one day thing. Um, so that people can just discover their clown. And then um, and from there, it just leads to um, clown courage and clown curiosity and clown chaos um i've just invented new names for all of my courses now yeah i was just seeing that on your website so you have all these scenes mm -hmm. clown so let's let's talk about what each of those uh briefly 
Yeah. So clown, clown courage is basically um, it's it's the beginner it's the beginner's course if you like, um, or maybe also for people who have already done clowning but they want to to experience a different approach. Mm. So I kind of have my my own. I mean, I train with nose to nose, and but sometimes then you know it becomes individual. It becomes who I am also, mm. um, and it really is about courage so it's called clown courage and um it's this first initial you know stepping outside of yourself and getting out there on stage and you just need a lot of courage for that you know and um yeah being being present in the moment or actually experiencing yourself and yourself in the space and yourself in mm. the space with others there's just so much you know, there's so much in it. It's very rich. What, what can you give it a, a little thumbnail sketch of what is a sort of a central exercise or game or something in that workshop in that beginning? Yeah, I mean, a central game is uh, is called uh, scene scene one, where we just work with a cloth and people come. It's a solo. People come up on stage, and they have no idea. They let all the ideas go and. They have one encounter with this cloth and something's going to happen. And I always say there's never nothing. <laughs> there's always something. And it might not be the same for you as it is for the audience. So the audience are the other participants, obviously. Um, and just amazing things happen just with this one little cloth. You know? What do you mean by cloth? Like, like a little hand a towel? Piece of material. A yeah. piece of material. And, and you put it on the stage and they encounter it or do you give it to them? Or it, they no, it's, about, it's on the stage. And it's also about introducing how, how to come onto stage, which is in my, in my experience or belief that, you know, you step onto stage and you look at the audience, just give the audience a moment to actually soak in, oh, who is this clown, you know, you know mm. who is this? Um, and also to show how you feel right mm. how you are in that moment and it's not about stepping on stage waving it's not like a circus clown kind of thing it's mm. it's yeah whenever we do like an impro or something it's always um well we're going to see a little bit of your life you know it's like you have this what do you call it a stethoscope or something no no it's not uh telescope yeah. or yeah and then you're looking through it and then you you can just see a little part of this clown's life you know, it's just it started a long time ago and it will continue when they leave stage. It's just we just see this little bit of it. And um, yeah, so that's the that's the kind of image to, we, we give or I give when I do the workshops. It's just, OK, give us a chance to see you, who you are. You look at us and then you just go about your own business. And, mm. uh, and every now and again, you know, when when there's something going on for you, then share it with us. Look at us. You know? It's a very, very simple exercise. And I think that a lot in clowning is is with the less is more. Uh, less is more in yeah. many things, you know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting that you have this cloth. I'm kind of fascinated by that because um, uh, that in some ways is more than... Like, like I've seen this very simplest clown exercise where you come out with nothing and you just are working with the audience. But I'm kind of interested with this mm -hmm. because at least then you're giving them something yeah. to work well, with think, other than them, yeah. other than just the, their own nakedness, you know. I mean, yes. And, and the cloth can also be like a symbol of whatever happens on stage. It's like the, the story that, you know, evolves um is a kind of, the, the cloth is a symbol for that you know mm. like anything can happen it can become anything you can become anything uh you know it can become a horse and you ride the horse or mm. uh it can become a snake or a tree or a, <laughs> any anything can happen yeah or maybe it's just a maybe it's just a a feeling or a sensation or a smell or an emotional something that mm. comes up so whatever's there is there and um, you know you just 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 welcome it all and there's been so many 
amazing scenes just with this one plot. Mm. It's pretty incredible. So that's that's a a, a, a beginner's exercise. But um, so that's the courage. And then what's the second level? The second uh, level is curiosity. So you know, it's, it's already when you have a little bit of a feeling about okay, this is yeah, this is my clown, and there's something recognizable about each person's clown. I think you know they can it can change always, but um, then it's more about curiosity. So working with a partner. So it's a lot of lot of duos and structures that we give for for people to to work together. The awareness of the of the partner. Look at them. You know, how can you inspire each other? How yeah. can we celebrate our differences um, because we are? <laughs> and you know, I mean, often uh, in the intensive workshops, I often have a co facilitator. So I've I worked a lot with Catherine Bryden or with Carol Thompson or with Sinica Lumulutu from Finland. Um, I'm working more with Sinica from Finland at the moment um, because she's closer now. <laughs> Since mm. I moved, she's closer, which is really great. Mm. And we're going to be doing an arts festival uh, next year together here. It's this amazing festival on this Schlei, on this uh, fjord. Beautiful. And um, it's also, that's a practice, you know, when you're co-facilitating with someone. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's how how you find freedom in relationship. It's like the story of life, isn't it? How mm, you yeah. find your freedom, but yet you are in relationship. And how can you practice generosity, you know? Yeah. That makes me think of, um, have you ever done the, du the duo exercise? Um, this is something I do quite often with... Um, so you ask everybody in the class to bring a gift, a real gift that they're going to give. And then you pair people up and have them improvise. And the main structure is that they each give their gift to the other person. And it may be wrapped or hidden or something. And this <laughs> is beautiful because they don't know who they're giving it to until this moment. So it might be totally inappropriate or it might be really beautifully appropriate. Or the yeah. two gifts might are usually there's some interesting relationship between the two gifts but it's just you saying about generosity yeah I think about that yeah no i don't know that exercise but it sounds really intriguing <laughs> yeah it's a really nice one because yeah lovely there's always because you've got something to work with but then you don't know what's actually going to unfold in the moment and you don't know what your gift is going to be from the other person yeah no we have more like my favorite my favorite exercise is um the twins so you're twins you're together mm. and uh you go behind a screen and look at each other from behind the screen and you decide on an emotion you just look at each other decide on an emotion and then you come out together uh and then you make the emotion bigger and then there's somebody there who interviews us the facilitator in mm. <laughs> interviews them and they're very emotional these twins right and it's really it's great fun because of course they sometimes they use gibberish sometimes real words but it's really it's it's so interesting to see because everything in clowning is about fiction and reality in my opinion so mm -hmm. you've got this fiction that they are just like together one but in reality they are two individuals so you're going to ask them um did you have a nice view out the window and one says yes one says no <laughs> so right they, this thing you know how can we tune in together but don't lose your own impulse you know how do you do that and that's again you know with the with the balance of how much of myself do i hold back and how much do i give as mm -hmm. an impulse in play which Beautiful. is just uh, yeah it's great it's great fun to do yeah. i love the sound of that so mm. that's the curiosity workshop mm. yeah um and then what what's the next one Clown chaos. <laughs> oh yeah, I love that they all start with C. This is this is brilliant. Yeah, it doesn't continue unfortunately because I didn't find a word. But <laughs> oh well, maybe we can help you. Yeah, um, folks. So, um, yeah, if you've got if you've got questions for Angela, I just want to. I know that everyone is mesmerized by your the brilliance of what you're saying, but I just want to encourage folks at home to ask questions and also, as I said earlier, to kind of reflect and repeat interesting phrases we have um lucy said finding the authentic you um which i think was something you said angela so mm. that was something that really 
stood out. Paul says, remember the cloth exercise well. Clown one knows. Oh, he did it. Yeah, Paul McDonald. Yeah. And um, Joanna says it's a situation. Sounds, I can't remember what, she, what, what, what she's referring to there. Sounds like a scene of the three clowns Angela played. Yeah, Robinson clown. I bet with the maybe with the giving the gifts, I thought of that as well, Joanna. Because um, in this Robinson clown, the play that we did, uh, 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 Joanna was the director, and we had a scene at the end where these three clowns who were in isolation, um, they gave each other what was for them the the most precious thing that they had, and you know they they gave it to each other and sacrificed it basically for the other one. Mm. That was very, uh, it was a very beautiful little scene. Yeah. yeah beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we were just on the verge of going into chaos. I mean, oh, not yeah, not chaos. chaos. Well, I mean, it's it's also something that, that um, I decided at some point also to develop a bit more. And things that I noticed, I mean, participants in a workshop are just... Um, the best clowns to learn from in everything, also for, for, for myself and my clown, and um, use it, using the space and um, bringing chaos into spaces is just so wonderfully refreshing, and mm -hmm. it's just it's just great fun. So we need so we need to have like the the structure, and things need to be clear, and they need to be slow, and you need to breathe. And yeah. all of that, but at some point it needs this acceleration, and you need you need to have this chaos because there's something there's something about chaos that is just so so healthy and so human um, that we all really love. Yeah, getting in a total muddle or getting stuck uh, in some kind of a way, um, and things fly around and. You know, of course, you're always careful that you don't hurt yourself and don't hurt anyone else and don't break anything. So these were the three golden rules that I learned from my teacher, Vivian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but in, in that, in play, to create this chaos, I mean, you can't purposely create it. It happens. But to be in a, you know, in a state of clown, that, that, to invite that, um, that's so important. And it's using using the space a lot. I mean, I used to be quite minimalistic as a clown, not using too much space. Um, but it's so healthy to actually use the space, and it's so liberating to to actually use the whole stage and and run around and <laughs> bring and, have, and, and maybe have a lot of uh, objects, you know, to to get yeah, yeah, to, to, have, be. to be chaotic with, you know, because again, minimalism is a kind of an aesthetic choice. Which yeah, can work sure. for clowning, but it's also, you know, I found this with the Zoom doing workshops on Zoom is that people are in their own living rooms or bedrooms or whatever, and they they're surrounded by all this chaos already. Yeah, and so it's so <laughs> much fun just to get them to go around and like pick stuff up and just go yeah, around, you know? yeah, yeah, sure. But it's like having this having this thing that I think is really beautifully uh, aesthetic, just to have a, a suitcase full of cloths or something. Yeah. Uh, to have that, and it's all in one bundle, right, in size yeah. there. Yeah. And so there's not much on stage, but then it has to develop. Things develop, and then all of a sudden, they all come out, and then it's chaos, and then you have them all all over the place, and that's just so. It's it's breathing. It's like breathing. Yeah. yeah. So you can, Beautiful. It, you it can is. It is like breathing. It's the breath coming in and out of the lungs, right? It's the same yeah. thing. And in that, and in that, somewhere in all of that chaos, there, 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 you can find like, I don't know, truth. It sounds quite serious, mm. but, but in that is there is something hidden in the chaos that uh, is going to be really, really important. <laughs> something <laughs> hidden in the chaos. Yes, yeah. um, I love that. So you just said it's not possible to do it intentionally what was the yeah you can't you yeah you can't say okay now i'm going to create chaos well you know but, you but as a teacher yeah. you have you must have ways to make it happen when you want it to happen yeah so what, i just what... encourage participants <laughs> yes yeah. go for it go for it go 
Keep going, keep going. Yes, keep going. more, 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 more. more. <laughs> that's, um, yeah. that's the second most common word in clown teacher's vocabulary. I yeah, think. I'm um, sure. I mean, first... some people get really pissed off about it. <laughs> more, more, more. Yeah. It's interesting, oh, right? Because it's... <laughs> but I mean, participants, you know, that's the wonderful invitation with all of these levels of clowning is that, you know, the facilitator can be part of the play, you know. Um, yeah, the duo. Oh, what was that word? Uh, no, what was that voice? I'm hearing a voice. Where's, <laughs> where's the voice coming? Yeah. Or they just say, oh, shut up, or just look at them very intensely, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rather yeah. than get all self-conscious and feel like you're being told off by the teacher, yeah. you, you actually play with it, right? You work with it. Yeah, you can play. You can play with anything that happens, can't you? Like people suddenly going to the loo and coming back and walking over stage. Yeah, walk. all that stuff. It just occurred to me how um, mm. the words, uh, you know, you talk, you spoke earlier about the via negativa as, as a very different approach. Mm. And it seems to me that the dominant kind of in, encapsulating word in the via negativa is no, right? Mm -hmm. No, not that. Yeah. No, off. Try something else, right? That's the via negativa. But your your dominant word, and I think in this other kind of teaching, which is kind of like the contrast to via negativa, is more. It's the opposite, mm -hmm. right? It's either no, off, or it's yes, more, more. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose you. I suppose you could say that. Yeah, uh, there are a couple of things that that I continually say and that I totally believe in is uh, uh, don't make it happen, let it happen. Mm. So you know, it's, it's this this. Uh, if anyone, if someone comes on stage and wants to be funny, that's just painful. <laughs> it's just not funny if they want to be funny, and it's not funny. Um, but I mean, you could, it could also be so painful that it's funny again. I don't know, maybe. Um, but yeah, I, I, I usually say, don't, don't, don't try and be funny and don't be creative. Because <laughs> that happens by accident, right? When, you, when you're playing and you're in, in play mode or you're, you have a joy of play, then, then it all happens anyway. So, you know, and then it's just, it's just like a gift. It, it just all flows and... And there it is. But if you go on stage already with us, this idea, um, okay, this has to be good. It's a lot, a lot of pressure. Yeah, mm -hmm. this has to be good. And if I fail, what happens if I fail? Um, so that's why I actually called um, my thing, which is called Hopkins Werkstatt für Clownforschung in German. It sounds very funny because it's well, I think I think so because it's just so serious. You know, it's like clown research center. Um, because I think it's, I, I brought in the word research because I just think it's important for us to be able to research without having that pressure, mm. you know, without, so, okay, that's not funny. Get off stage. Uh, mm. that kind of, that kind of thing. No, just take the pressure away. Just try this out. Does this work? Um, oh yeah, well maybe next time, uh, try something else. Uh, maybe that works. And when it works, oh, wow, look, it works. Wow. That was, that really sparked and your clown was so totally there. Mm. Um, so now, so now you have a, you know, you have a direction where you can go with your clown, um, rather than, um, you know, like, I don't know, like pressurizing and, uh, being scared of, uh, uh, delivering a good performance, which I think yeah. is just really a sad. That's just so sad, you know, because, I mean, people come to workshops for so many different reasons. You know, some people just want to have fun. Some people haven't laughed for so <laughs> for so many years. They want to just laugh, and, and that all happens, you know. Yes. Um, some people want to learn a lot about themselves. Some people want to learn about clowns specifically. Some people are very ambitious. Some people... <laughs> <laughs> some people already have experience some uh, uh hospital clowns want to get back to their authentic clown some mm. you know there's there's just so many different reasons why people i love this i love this that you that your term research kind of helps them helps mm. them all to come together and to just realize that we're all we're all just on a journey trying to learn more about ourselves and yeah 
the world. Right? We're all in one boat. <laughs> we are one one big boat that's that feels like it's sinking. <laughs> right? Oh, that's depressing. But the good thing is the boat will still exist. The boat. Yeah. The boat will still exist after yeah. we drown. That's that's the thing that keeps me optimistic because I'm like, yeah, maybe the human race is like doomed. But you know what? This 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 earth thing that's very amazing is gonna keep going. I have this image of this boat at the bottom of the ocean and everyone's still rowing. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I have a show, you know, called um, Ship of Fools that uh -huh. um, that I'm in and I direct it with, with three other wonderful clowns. Two of them are Swedish mm -hmm. and um, the other one is from Norway. So, right. <laughs> and then there's me. Anyway, you know, it's, it's about the four of us on a ship and we're lost at sea and we have mm. we're pre pretty much clueless and we we keep changing direction and changing who's in charge but it, you just given me the idea of a new scene where we could just sink and we don't realize we've sunk and we're just like <laughs> <laughs> you're down there with the crabs yeah yeah we have yeah. i mean we had a very similar scene uh, in the robinson clown that joanna directed mm. um but we had this little tiny boat it was really nice just like a little tiny one that we held and <laughs> Bobbing on the ocean, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so chaos mm. is the third stage or the third yeah. workshop, right? So, what's the fourth one, Angela? Oh, it's very boring. It's stage clown. <laughs> <laughs> stage clown. Basically, it's just uh, quite boring. Yeah, quite boring. We just do public performances and then we reflect on them and think about the impro so, so it's getting more down to the nitty-gritty stuff which is um you know like the first clown workshop is like you know oh yeah it's losing your virginity like here we are clown mm -hmm. <laughs> and then after that it, it does get it does get a bit harder because you know this initial this initial wow um, yeah the euphoria kind of wears off the, yeah the and then and then it's really getting down to the nitty-gritty bits and mm -hmm. you know okay what works what doesn't work uh, where am i uh, in yeah. what state am i in really in clown where is my clown visible mm -hmm. um so yeah so we do do performances with all different kinds of structures and uh, reflect on it and then do another performance and just see you know how can we how can we develop something? How can we find new structures in prose? Um, yeah, what works with the audience? What doesn't? Basically, that's it. Beautiful. So yeah. you need to find another C for that workshop. So if anybody has uh, if anybody has any great ideas, there's this stage clown. Uh, can we think of a, a cool uh, something? Title of this workshop? Yeah, yeah, that would be really interesting because I was looking with Carol Thompson actually. We were thinking about oh, what could it? What, what word could it be? Because it's all with right. C. C C. It's, yeah, just C C me. <laughs> C C me. <laughs> yeah. Could it be well, the only word that comes to mind right now is connection, but that's not really doesn't really yeah. speak to the stage issue. Yeah, stage. we need something juicy. <laughs> yeah. Um what's an what's another word for stage or a or a a clown? Yeah, I have looked into this. <laughs> Joanna's saying carrying on. That's no good. Carry on clown. Yeah, Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Try again, Joanna. Try again. <laughs> Keep going. I mean, we could have a few. Uh... Come on. We've got another 15 minutes here on this conversation, so we have plenty of time. I, th oh, I think um, you've done a great job, though, for coming up with those three initial Cs. I really like that. Um <laughs> courage curiosity chaos as a kind of as a kind of pathway yeah a yeah. ladder almost yeah um and then I, I guess if you have to get to the if you if you can't find the c for the fourth one it's a good clown joke anyway isn't it yeah so we, sort of, we create the pattern and the expectation and then we like stage clown yeah exactly <laughs> well joanna says circus clown but that's not that's not right either Capsize. Uh, Pandora's got a good one. Capsize clown. Capsize clown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Going yeah, with the boat. We'll, we can, we'll, we'll think about it. Calamity. Um, Collapse. Yeah. yeah. Capitalizing. 
Capitalizing <laughs> could be good, I, I guess. Capitalizing clown. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. It's a bit too. It's a bit too businessy, like. Uh, yeah, it isn't it? Businessy. <laughs> much entrepreneurial. Yeah, well, well, we'll, we'll think about it. Yeah, because I, I, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I am quite businessy because I'm a one-woman show, so doing yeah. all this myself. Yeah. And, Tell me um, about that, because I, I, we're both in the business, right? So how do you, hmm. how do you make it work for yourself? Um, well, it's been really hard actually because uh, I founded my, my space. Um, and invested a lot of money and time and love and sweat and everything <laughs> in Potsdam um, in 2018. So it was running really well. And my concept is to invite um, guest facilitators who also offer workshops because I don't believe that, you know, one approach or one person holds the truth of clown. So how many different inspiring ways on things that you have to learn, uh, you can learn, you know, from everyone. And uh, so many people have something uh, to tell you, you know, you can, you can learn from so many different people. Mm -hmm. So in, in that spirit, I invited um, different guest facilitators and that started going really, really well. And I really loved that. And, I have this swan in concept where the facilitators can just swan in <laughs> and I, I take care of everything else. Um, and yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, and it was going well. And then along came, you know, all the pandemic. Mm. Um, and that was really, really uh, a lot of struggle to keep yeah. the place running because, you know, it's, yeah. it's money. Yeah. You have to pay out every month. Yeah. Um, and but I was I'm very passionate about the space and found quite a few supporters. So we founded an, an association, um, and those people. It's called Clown Forschung e.V., which means clown clown research, and it's a non-profit organization. And so we've done a few. We had a few fundings and different help from different yeah. people to keep it up and running. Wonderful. Um, but otherwise, apart from that, I'm uh, pretty much a, a one-woman show doing yeah. everything myself, you know, the website and blah, blah, blah. Having to do, yeah. I mean, it's it, it, it's a, a, mar a gargantuan task, I, you know, yeah. I think. Um, we have to sort mm. of be good at, we have to be good at everything. We have to be um, good at everything. Angela, I think we have yeah. the winner here because um, Lucy has come up with the, the most, the, the best, Obvious, most obvious uh, solution here, which is creation, clown creation. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that says it in a nutshell, doesn't it? Yeah, I see this little clown being born. <laughs> clown creation. <laughs> Dave says clown creativity, which um, is another play on that word. Capability clown. Paul says, which I love, but I don't yeah. think it quite works because. Uh, yeah. It's funny. Capability. I will take all of these suggestions into consideration. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. No, no, it's great. Yeah. Clown. I used to have this thing. Actually, I'm, I'm probably going to revive it soon, but it's called the Clown Creation Studio. Mm. And um, it's an online thing where I give, you know, mentoring and one-on-one and, and -on -one coaching for people who are, who are creating a, a, a clown piece. And it's been amazing. I don't know if you did this during the pandemic at all, but it's been really amazing to discover how much is possible online through Zoom. Yeah. You know, the, the certain things that are definitely not possible at all. Yeah. But I've I've found that um, one thing that really is possible is directing shows because mm -hmm. you, know, you have yeah. the the visual, and it was amazing. Yeah. Well, my opinion on that is I never actually offered any online things apart from I was invited once to do a couple of hours workshop but I I'm really not the kind of online person for workshops mm. um I never really enjoyed it I really want the connection and to see the people and to feel the people <laughs> mm -hmm. um that was that that was so much more important to me so so I never really offered online stuff. So mm -hmm. what I did do is my my videos. I got into this. 
Oh yeah, it's yeah. Doing all of these videos, so I did about seventy-five little video clips of. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. I watched some of them, and they were quite beautiful. Tell us about the process of making those. Well, basically, what could you do? You know, everything was shut down, and <laughs> I had this big space, and it was all empty, and the clouds were gone. So yeah, so I just, I just started. I just did this one thing, and I thought with a friend of mine, I said, oh, look, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make some spaghetti and make a bit of chaos. And, you know, because it's fun. I just want to do something. <laughs> I have all of these ideas. So then I did the first one, which was, you know, because everyone was buying loads of pasta everywhere. Mm -hmm. the pasta was sold out and the toilet paper and whatever. So, so I just did a little clip on that. And just with my phone, you know, it's just fun. Yeah. Um, and then I just just continued and then I had like I don't know I have so many ideas it must be my problem really I have so many ideas of what I can do so I kept uh, you know, um, every idea I had I just do a one take thing I want to do you mind if I um go ahead uh, <laughs> whatever, I, whatever it is <laughs> uh so I'm just trying to sort out my uh what how to do this but um I would love to to share a little of one of them on this call. Oh, is there one that's your favorite that you'd like to share? And I can I can put it on the I screen. send you I send you this link once about um I make did, did a speech about how we're gonna save the world or something. I think I sent it to you. Uh, oh that know. one. Yes, yes, yes. I've got that one. Right. Oh. Yeah well I, I enjoy doing that basically. <laughs> There's so many lovely ones. I really enjoyed listening to your heart. Ah um, yes that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to put this on. Let me figure out how to do this. In the meantime, we've got some lovely um, more suggestions here for the sea thing. Come and see, clown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. It's so it's so good. I love it. Um, I just I love the um, the, the little moments like uh, you know we're more connected with our families. I mean, we may not like them very much, but yeah, yeah that's a little bit of truth, like you know, <laughs> slotted in a little bit of truth. Yeah, and yeah. dream big, and and it's okay to dream small. Yeah, you can dream small. Yeah, you can... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I did, I did this whole series, and you know, this is my my favorite hat to have here. This Beautiful is uh, hat, yeah. I love this hat. It's so. Oh. It's very yeah. dear to you. Anyway, so I did this this whole series, a very amateur, like, you know, with some kind of a program on the the whatever. So it's quite amateur, but it was fun um, just to to pick up some moments. And it's just by chance, you know, without having any big expectations that it has to be good. Yeah. 
yeah. uh, just see what happens, just the one take, and then just, you, you know, just cut it together. And, and it turned into 75. Yeah. I can't believe that. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely 75. Amazing. So some of them in Potsdam, um, mm. and some of them up here where I am now in Schleswig, up north, yeah. because I, I secretly uh, came to stay with my partner <laughs> <laughs> here, although I wasn't allowed to, I think. Um, um, so I'm going to just um, share this, uh, share the link for people of your um, YouTube channel on, I'm going to mm. put it into the chat so that Eric is just coming into the chat right now, folks. So you can go and watch uh, to your heart's content <laughs> and there's one minute videos, which are brilliant and funny and, and somehow serious and, and, and um, self, you know, there's a lot of humor and, and not taking oneself too seriously and lightness and mm. uh, making fun. But at the same time, there's a kind of sincerity to it. And I just think that's yeah. a very beautiful and difficult balance to find. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's just something that I really, I really love to, to have fun and be silly. And at the same time, really say something. Also. Yeah. How can not you be just, fun? Uh, that's a good challenge for a, a, a little creation exercise, right? Yeah. Say something you really want to say, but really have fun. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we had that with gibberish, you know, like the message mm. to the world. Um, <laughs> writing gibberish poems as a message to the world. And it's so, yeah, it's so meaningful and mm. yet meaningless. <laughs> beautiful. Is, Lucy yeah. says beautiful, yes. Mm. Um, Angela, we have to finish in a couple minutes, and I just want to give you space to talk about your um, upcoming workshop or anything else you want to, you know, how how can people work with you? Yeah, well, um, at the moment, I, I don't have a I don't have a space, so I'm still looking for a space up here up north. But I, I rent a space. So I rent this amazing space that is uh, used for residential workshops that I offer, mm. and I have it in my program and on the website. There's this the amazing course coming up in spring called Clown and Music. So it's with two um, very, very experienced musicians from Zurich, from Switzerland. And we're going to bring clowning in prose and music in prose together and, uh, you know, create a, a clown orchestra, orchestra. And um, we're going to just going to see what happens with that. And we're going to offer concerts and shows in the in the week that we're there it's like a week-long intensive course um so anyone who is talented or not talented <laughs> musical or not musical <laughs> can be part of it you know as long as you have some kind of a notion of what is clown or done some kind of clowning so that we don't have to start right from the beginning um that's quite helpful but otherwise if you if you love having fun and love playing music and you will see uh what comes out of it. I mean, I'm really, really excited about this workshop because it was planned quite a few years ago, but then lockdown happened. And then trying to find dates where it fits mm. together is just incredible. Um, difficult. So how many, what, what are the dates? Oh dear. They're in April sometime. I think it's uh, after Easter or before Easter. I don't actually have the exact dates. They're on the website. Um, hang on, hang on. Events. Don't the exact dates. But it's going to be fantastic. And the place we stay at is just uh, next to a lake. And uh, my sister, who's a wonderful cook as well, she'll be, she'll be cooking for us. Uh, so it's a kind of all around, they're going to be taken good care of. <laughs> so if anyone's interested in coming, we would be very happy if you join us. It's half full already. It's the 12th to the 17th of April. Okay, great. It's like a spring clown school. So I have always in the autumn and spring, I have uh, two weeks of a clown school. Oh, I, I'm seeing it now. Clown, six day residential, Clundale. Clundale, yeah, yeah. That's wow. uh, And that's just next to a lake. And it's, a, it's this beautiful old farmhouse. And um, we just have a really nice seminar room up the top and then a dining area and a, a place with an open fire and the kitchen and bedrooms to sleep in. So we're all in this, this place together and lovely walks to go on. And yeah, a lot of freedom. I'm, 
I'm tempted. To, I'm tempted to come myself because it sounds absolutely blissful and. It will be. <laughs> I, yeah, I that would be great. <laughs> and you play ukulele. <laughs> yeah, and I play piano as well. Oh wow! Well, that would be a bit difficult with the luggage with the piano. No, I well, I have a little. Um, <laughs> I have a. Uh, do you know the melodica? You know that instrument? Yeah, I have something mm. similar. Uh, I have this really nice, beautiful instrument that I was given, and I'm trying to learn to play right now. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. there's ways. Oh, wow. Well, um, so folks, uh, if you get to work with Angela and go to her studio, I would thoroughly recommend it. I think it would be amazing. Angela, thank you so much for coming on and chatting thank with you. me in the most delightful hour. And I feel like I've learned a lot. Absolutely. Same here. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was great to chat. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Well, hopefully talk to you again very soon. And in yeah. the meantime, um, bye for now. See you around. <laughs> Bye. All right, folks. Thank you so much for hanging out with us on Clownversations for another wonderful hour of clown talk. Um, I have some very cool people coming up over the next few weeks, folks, including Joanna Bassi coming up very soon, uh, Deborah Kaufman, uh, Karen McCarty, and the rescheduled Ron Lynn Foreman which didn't happen last week due to some technical problems. He now has a new computer and we will be doing Ron and Foreman again very soon, I promise you. So thank you so much. I can see all the wonderful comments coming in from Joanna, from Dave, Angie Foster. Lovely comments, lovely conversation. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you again very soon on Conversations. Bye for now. <laughs>